Building a web app used to be extremely gatekept, only available to technical developers. Not anymore. I'm gonna show you today how to build a SaaS or any kind of website using Mocha. And we're gonna go from zero to a published app on the internet. Uh, we're gonna build this in like a few minutes and no coding is required. Okay, so to get started, you go to getmocha.com. Uh, I'm already logged in, so I'm gonna to go to my dashboard. You could just create uh, an account for free. And so today we're going to build a recipe sharing finder app. So here's the prompt, create a recipe finder app with beautiful food photography, ingredients lists, and step-by-step -step instructions. Include search and filtering by cuisine type and dietary restrictions. This is a pretty small prompt. You could add more specifications here, both in design or in terms of features. Uh, you could add screenshots of desired effects. You could give it like design vibes that you like. I like to keep it simple for the first version and iterate from there. So let's hit go and Mocha gets to work. All right, so Mocha's done with the initial version. Um, this is looking great. There's a couple, there's an image that's not working, but other than that, this is looking great. This rectangle here is an actual interactive website that you can click through. Um, and so this is what the actual website is like. You can actually put it in full screen using this button here. And now I'm seeing that website in full screen. Uh, you could see the mobile view like this. Mocha built a very mobile responsive design, which is great. Um, and here we have the publish button, which we'll get to in a second. And on the right, we have our chat. So here on the right, we could just ask Mocha to build more features or change things. So for example, the avocado toast image is broken. We could start there. We could be like, hey, the avocado toast image is broken. Please fix it. So let's just do that. And so you could just keep chatting with Mocha and asking for things and Mocha, think of it as a developer, a designer, and a product manager with whom you can chat and ask questions. And it's helping you build your website. So here we go, it fixed the image, it's refreshing the page, but as you saw, the avocado toast image is now fixed. Let's add a new feature to our app. So how about, let's look at this. This is like the instructions page. Let's say we don't like this page and we want an alternative design. I actually like it, but just for the sake of it, let's take a screenshot and I'm gonna send this screen, I'm gonna paste this screenshot in the chat UI and I'm gonna say like, hey, please update this layout to increase readability and style. And this is very vague, but you could come in here with a very specific vision. Maybe you have Figma mockups, maybe you have a designer, maybe you have features that you'd love to see on this page. You could just ask for those. All of this works. Um, the point I'm trying to make is it's an iterative process and you're working with Mocha to make your changes. Every time you ask for a change, Mocha first thinks a little bit and then it gives you like the, uh, the, the overview of what it's going to do. And so here it's explaining it's gonna change the typography, it's gonna have a more modern card design, improve visual structure and have more interactive elements. Once it's designed its plan, it starts writing code. But behind the scenes, Mocha is writing code for you. It's an actual developer. This is very different than previous like website builders. You don't have to learn a whole complicated UI with tons of constraints and buttons and terms and complexity. You just kind of like ask for outcomes and Mocha is your developer and partner who's building them for you. Uh, this means that sometimes it makes mistakes and it gets things wrong, but it also means it could heal and fix things themselves, just like a developer would. Ah, so this is great to see. So Mocha made a mistake. This happens. Sometimes it writes code and there's a bug. So if you're technical, you could go and look at the logs and you would see what's going wrong with the bugs. There's like a use state not defined. This doesn't matter. You don't need to know any of this. If this happens, you could do try fixing with AI, which is a great thing. And so it can fix 80, 90% of issues by itself. If this didn't work, there's other things you could do, which is you could toggle discuss mode and talk with the AI through the troubleshooting error. It might ask you like, what do you see? What don't you see? Can you show me the logs? And as you talk through it, it'll gain more and more context and it'll do a much better job of fixing it. But see, as you see here, it fixed the issue. So the AI fixed the issue and now this is our new page. I think it's slightly nicer. There's a little toggle list for the ingredients uh, and then instructions and it created a, like a more modern card design. How about if we added a carousel? at the bottom of this page with similar recipes to increase engagement. Add a carousel at the bottom of the recipe page, which suggests similar recipes. So Mocha's gonna initialize, think about this, and build us a first version. 
Here we go. So if we go into a recipe page, we now see a carousel of similar recipes. This is great. We still have a broken avocado toast image. I don't know why that reverted. We should fix that again. I want to show you something that Mocha's really good at, which is very fun also, which is Mocha's really good at design. So we have a current design vibe that it went with, which is like rather clean, slick and professional. But what if we asked Mocha, make this website feel like Cyberpunk 77? So I'm giving it a very extreme design uh, directive here to see what it does. You would typically not do this, but it's gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a little bit like how Mocha can be a tool you use to explore kind of like visual designs and feels and vibes for your app and website. There's a range of things it can do. And once you like a design, you could keep iterating to keep polishing by either describing things you like or don't like about it, by sending it screenshots of other websites that inspire you that you would like to feel more similar to or any other um, kind of prompting that you can get to that makes it make design changes. All right, we have our Cyberpunk 77 version of the site. This is super extreme. Um, as I kind of suggested, I do not think we want this, but I wanted to show you what it, what Mocha can do. Um, so now I want to show you something else. So if you end up in a space or a place with your application that you're unhappy with, like here, I really don't want this Cyberpunk 77 design. You could just very easily go back in time. So every one of these is actually a version and you could go back in time and you could either view that version or restore it directly. I'm going to show you view and then restore, but you could restore directly. So here we go. We're viewing the previous version. We're switching back to it. Mocha goes right back to it. It tells you that we're in viewing mode and we look exactly like the previous version. Great. I prefer this one. I do not want to go back to the cyberpunk. So I click restore and here we go. We are now using this version from Mocha. So this is a really powerful tool because it means that you could just keep iterating and you can always save yourself by going back to a previously good version. You also have the opportunity to duplicate your application. So you could just clone your application and you would have a second version of this application called copy. And now you could have them diverge. If you wanted to go really down one route with one of them and down another route with the first, you could do that. There's many ways that basically we encourage you to experiment and keep iterating and iterating and iterating on your website. So now that I've shown you how to iterate on your website, I want to show you a couple more advanced features of Mocha. So if you go into the app settings here, first of all, you could change the project name and description. These will appear when you share your application. They will appear here and here. So if you want to change these, you could just do that right here. Um, there are assets in the application. Remember when I took that screenshot? So it saves this. If you upload anything to Mocha, you could upload a logo, you could upload screenshots, it'll all come here. You could manage them, you could delete them, you could rename them, you could give them descriptions, which helps the AI use them more accurately. So knowledge is a very interesting feature. It sends this text to the AI in every single request. So you could use this for things like, I am non-technical, please explain everything to me in a non-technical way. You could also have details about your audience or details about your design preferences or details about documentation for SDKs or APIs that are not very well known and that the AI tends to make regular mistakes on. You could just paste everything here. Bear in mind that it will be sent on every request so it limits how big your app can get, but the limits are quite high and so you shouldn't really feel it. So to show you an example, I'm gonna give the audience of the website to this to, to Mocha just so it can adapt to everything. I'm gonna say the audience of this website is enthusiastic amateur uh, cooks who don't know much and need a lot of guidance. So now Mocha is going to see this in every single request and it should adapt the decisions it makes on how it's building the features. I'm just fixing that avocado test image because it's starting to bother me. Okay, we're back. The avocado is back. That's great. I want to talk a bit about publishing. So you make a great website. You really like it. The first thing you want to do and what makes it really real is publishing to the web so that other people can use it. First of all, so that you can use it on different devices and so that your friends, family, or future users can all access and use it. So with Mocha, it's very easy. You could publish with one click. You go to the publish button here. Um, you can manage your domains. And so here you could choose a subdomain like nixrecipes.mocha.app and I could publish to that. Let's do that to start. And so the publishing takes between 15 seconds and two minutes, depending on how big the app is. This app is rather small, so it happened in about 10 seconds, which is great. And so now if I go to this URL, nixrecipes.mocha.app, the website is available and I could share this with my friends everywhere. Uh, notice that we have a little made in Mocha 
um, watermark here. You can remove that as long as you're a subscriber. All you have to do is go into the settings, go into the sharing settings and remove watermark here by untoggling this and finally publish the app again and the watermark will disappear. Great, let's check the website again and no more watermark, that's fantastic. Discuss mode. So there's a mode here, as you see discuss, that you can enable. And when this mode is activated, the AI no longer makes changes to your application. Rather, it just can answer questions you have. So you could use this for many different things. You could use it to troubleshoot. If there's like a weird behavior that you don't understand, and when you ask the AI to fix it, it seems to not get it right. It just seems to keep making mistakes. I recommend switching to discuss mode, describing the error, brainstorm with the AI as a brainstorm partner, and it will have a lot more ideas. And then you turn discuss mode off and say, now go fix it. And it will typically do a much better job. So discuss mode could be used for troubleshooting complicated errors. So let's use discuss mode to ask, what should we build next? What should we build next in this app? Please think through the PRD. So here the application is gonna use discuss mode. It's aware of the custom knowledge. It's aware of the app, its name, its description. It could see all of the code. It's aware of our previous conversation. It has tons of context. Favorites functionality. So the goal is to allow users to save and manage their favorites recipes within the snack stick app. Great. So it's describing all of this. I'm not gonna read through all of this, but this is like really, really kind of like thorough, which is great. And so now if I switch discuss mode off, I'm like, great, build it it now is gonna go and build exactly that feature. So you can use discuss mode to either get ideas on the next feature to build, or if you know what it is, but you would like to refine it, you could discuss with the AI about your idea. And then when you like it, just say, great, build it, or like go and implement what we just talked about, and the AI will go do that, which is a very good way of building like well-rounded features. Great, so we have this favorites feature. Now I can go and favorite features like this. And when I go into the favorites tab, I have my favorite recipes, which is great. Okay, so I went online and I found a logo that I liked more than this little emoji plate, which is a salt and pepper kind of black and white vector. And I just uploaded it here to Mocha and I'm gonna insert it to the chat and say like, please use this as the logo for the website. So as easy as that, Mocha can see the logo. It can understand what it is. It understands our directive. And so it's gonna go and place it. It should go and place it up here by the Lish. This is a simple example, but as you can imagine, if you're building a portfolio for your photography, or if you wanna upload team pictures for your SaaS website, you often wanna upload your own assets, whether they be images, videos, fonts, or anything else really. You could do that through Mocha. There's like a built-in Dropbox is the way to think about it. And here we go. We have the new logo with Snackstastic at the top. Um, we're looking great. One last thing I'm going to mention, we've built Mocha for non-technical people, but sometimes people are technical or they're working with a technical partner. And so you do have the ability to watch, to see all of the code, it's all here. This is a fully fledged editor. You can come and edit the code directly here if you would like. You also can download the code. Everything you build with Mocha belongs to you. The code is yours. You could download it, export it to like another tool like Cursor or any other IDE and keep building. Um, it's not something that Mocha tries to own at all. So that's Mocha in a nutshell. You might want to upgrade to a higher plan. I was, I am on the Silver plan, which allows me to have more messages. You have more applications. You could support for larger apps. You have more custom domains. And when you deploy, you could publish to a named subdomain. These are all Mocha Pro perks, but you could start for free to see if it works. We've been impressed with what some of our users have done with the free tier. That's Mocha in a nutshell. Uh, we're really excited about what we're building. We have a lot of very exciting updates coming down the pipeline. Uh, I can't wait to see what you will build with Mocha. Thanks. My baby, my darling, my sugar, my mocha. Oh, you're my baby.